I'm assuming a lot of you already saw Chaperone made a reaction or a response. Let's watch it. And then we're going to use this to tie into a conversation I've been wanting to have with you for a while. Another content creator came out and talked about how he still loves his MAGA parents. I have MAGA parents. And so I think it's an important conversation to be had. But let's go ahead and watch Chapel react to the internet giving her backlash. And then we'll have a deeper conversation, right? We'll use this as an opportunity to have a much bigger conversation about life. I have encouraged people to use critical thinking skills, learn about what they're voting for, learn about who they're voting for and ask questions. And it's being completely taken out of context per usual. There is nuance to what I say in interviews. And I think it's important that people use critical thinking. I think it's important for me to question authority and question world leaders and question myself, question my algorithm, question if some person that tweeted something about someone else was even true. It's important to question because that's how I think we move forward. This is my third election in voting and the world is changing so rapidly and I want to be part of the generation that changes things for good because we need it. If you come to my shows, if you read my full interviews, if you literally know anything about me and for what I stand for, you know that this is not lip service, this is not virtue signaling, that my actions have always paved the way for my project and the people who really know me. Actions speak louder than words and actions speak louder than an endorsement. Here's the full quote that a lot of people are just not reading. I have so many issues with our government in every way, she says. There are so many things that I would want to change, so I don't feel pressure to endorse someone. There's problems on both sides, and I encourage people to use your critical thinking skills. Use your vote. Vote small. Vote for what's going on in your city. The change she wants to see in the U.S. is this election year, she says, instantly is trans rights. They cannot have cis people making decisions for trans people, period. So, hear it from my mouth, if you're still wondering. No, I'm not voting for Trump. And yes, I will always question those in power and those making decisions over other people. And I will stand up for what's right and what I believe in and like, it's always at the forefront of my project. And I'm sorry that you fell for the clickbait. Well, we covered it yesterday. I don't think she said anything new in this video that we didn't cover yesterday. So that's kind of interesting. I'm not sure what the clickbait was. So now I'm wondering, what does she think we thought we heard a little bit? Like, you know, I don't care how you vote. I don't care if you vote third party. I don't care who you vote for. What I care about is that you are actually doing it in line with your values and you know why you're doing it. But I'm not really sure how this video was any different than what we read yesterday. So what does she mean by the end of you fell for the clickbait? Like what clickbait? You, like every, I feel like the same conclusion can be said. She's not endorsing Kamala, which is fine. Some people are going to be disappointed in that because a lot of people feel like, look, a vote, a, a vote not for Kamala is a vote for Trump ultimately. That's kind of how politics works. The good news is that Kamala has a really strong chance of winning. So that's really good. But also it is a part of the status quo. Remember that like basic Democrats only understand trans issues so far. The status quo only understands unique lifestyles so far. So they're not going to be perfect. So what you're really voting for in this time and and uh, the, what you're really voting for in this time is not a perfect candidate. It's just the candidate that's going to get you closer to your goal. And again, it depends on how you're playing the game of politics. It sounds like Chapel isn't playing politics. It sounds like she's playing her values. So at the end of the day, like that's what's valuable here. Um, Chat says people thought she was MAGA. Impossible. She's pro-Palestine and she's a lesbian. Like she could be a MAGA supporter, but that would be crazy. In the same way that if you guys just watched, there's like communist MAGA people that are pro-Palestine. Have you seen them? They're like a small niche group, like the like the black Jews. You know what I mean? It's just like everybody slow down, okay? Everybody relax. So look, at the end of the day, obviously it's great she's not voting for Trump. I wouldn't have, I didn't assume that personally, but okay, that's good to know, I guess. I guess that's, it's nice, I suppose. 
chat says, wait, MAGA communists? Yeah, um, I guess Hassan was recently on, what was it, CBS, CNN, one of those channels. And they did a documentary where they interviewed the MAGA cons communists. And it's just like bubbles morphing into weird Power Ranger morphs. I don't even know how to explain it, but I, I gotta love it. And look, if you're new to my channel, we're not categorizing people to say they can't change. We're categorizing people like we categorize music. And so I know I have a lot of new people in the audience and I love that, but I'm not trying to label people to keep them like good or, I'm not trying to label people like you're the good guys and you're the bad guys. I'm trying to label you like a label music. Like, okay, you're punk rock. Okay, you're like soft rock. Okay, you're like screamo. I'm just trying to figure out what genre of music you are because every genre of music has its own history, its own reason for existing, its own belief system. And since people adhere mostly to how their communities morph and they morph into those communities, I'm just trying to figure out what I'm dealing with here. Call it my neurodivergence, call it my interest in people, call it my interest in categorization, but I'm not here to like put a label on you and say you're always this label. Like I don't even really believe in the ideas of good and bad outside of the micro. Like on the macro, like we're all just energies figuring out our own existence on the earth. But you know, for me, while I'm living, it's easier for me to categorize people to understand who I'm talking to and what am I dealing with. And I know people will say, well, Brittany, can't you just talk to me like I'm an individual? Yes, but that takes a lot more work. And honestly, do you don't deserve my time that way, girl. Like, let's be real. Just like, what's your thing? Let me know. Let's cut to the chase. Let's go quicker. It's like when you're dating somebody, I don't want to get to know you as an individual before we've gone over the basics. Are you pro-trans rights? Yes or no? Because if you're like, no, I'm not pro-trans rights, but can you get to know me as a person? No. I don't need any new friends in my life that are anti-trans. You know what I mean? Like, with peace and love, like we can live, you know, agree to disagree, but also I don't need to get to know you. But that's just my personal opinion because I already love enough people that are anti-trans. I don't need another one in my life. You know what I'm saying? I got enough family members that are religious and, and MAGA. I don't need one more person. Speaking of which, this conversation is really important to have in regards to loving your MAGA family, because this is really what it's about with Chapel Roan. People are hurt. People are scared for their family members. People are worried whether you're a MAGA person or a Kamala person. You're worried that voting for the other person is the end of America because everybody's paranoid and in their fear. And I just need you to know, even if Trump gets elected, okay, it's not the end of the universe. The universe doesn't revolve around you just in case you didn't realize. Is it more frustrating? Yes. Is it going to be harder? Yes. Is there a chance you're going to get more of your civil rights taken away? Yes. It's not the end of the world. He's only president for four years. And then you have to work in reversing whatever policies are enacted during his reign. But like at the end of the day, okay, if you're acting like the next four years is everything, God forbid any of our ancestors actually live through the hell they live through. Okay, so let's be a little optimistic, people. Nobody likes a Debbie Downer. With that said, there's this YouTuber who kind of went viral over a million views on this video. I still love my MAGA parents. I think... He's a queer person, if I remember correctly, I could be wrong, but let's listen to him because I think it's an interesting way to have the conversation and move it forward. What do we do in a world where we say we want people to get along, we want people to be tolerant, we want to live with each other, but yet we look at MAGA voters like they're the spawn of Satan. Look, MAGA voters are their own nuanced, complicated group of people that are coming to conclusions because they think it's morally correct. And then those ethics are impacted by those morals. So we have to have conversations about how those things work. And again, when people bring up Project 2025, just a reminder, what do you think conservatives want? This is what I'm trying to tell you. If conservatives want, if a majority of the country wants 2025, then that's what's gonna happen. So if you do not want Project 2025 to be real, you need to vote for Kamala Harris. If you're not gonna vote for Kamala Harris, that's also your prerogative. You're doing something else. But the majority of people who are going to vote, who are going, going to go out and vote, will vote on that one issue alone, just to make sure Project 2025 doesn't have a chance of becoming a reality, right? That doesn't exempt Kamala or any of these politicians for having the hands of anything else that's negative in the world, like genocide or anything else, right? So at the end of the day, for you or me, we might be one issue voters. Maybe we're one issue voters when it comes to abortion or gay rights or Project 2025, but so are the conservatives. So many of the people I know are voting MAGA just because they're pro-life. That's it, one issue. So at the end of the day, no matter how you feel about something or I feel about something, everybody feels that way about the way they're going through life, every single person on this planet, every single homophobe on this planet, not every single one, I'm being all hyperbolic, they really think they're saving your life. 
which is why we need to stop people from trying to save us, which is why, again, I say the world is the way it is because everyone thinks they have the answer. You don't have the answer for everybody. You just have the answer for yourself, which is why what goes for me can't go for you because what works for you might not work for me. And that's what we have to fully accept. But remember that religious people, especially, they think they found the answer to the whole universe, meaning that they think it's their job to bring people over to whatever God they have to the point where they will ruin people's lives. They will kill people in the name of their God, right? So you have to remember that we're doing our best to say, hey, you're not, you know, live and let live type thing. But also, I don't want to hurt religious people. I don't want to hurt my MAGA family. I want them to live safely in this country and around the world. But that means they also have to give that energy to other people. And that's really hard to ask of somebody who believes in a God, which is why we got to get religion out of government. Get religion out of government. Get religion out of government and you will see a shift in the world. Not a purely wonderful shift, like secularists can also do bad things, but religion is absolutely impacting everybody for the worst. Okay, so this YouTuber, Horse Gold, Horace, Horace Gold, let's see what he has to say. My parents are both conservative Trump supporters. And yes, they're both black. <laughs> I was a little nervous to make this video at first because I was like, oh, I don't want to put my parents' shit on blast. And then I remember that my mother is literally in a Jubilee video about black conservatives versus white. So I just want to say him and his mother are both interested in making content. They are content creators. They're not just like regular people. They are regular people, but they're obviously using this to like make a thing out of it. So they're now officially content creators liberals and i was like she's fine she can handle it when donald trump first started to ruin the republican party i like many others took some space from my parents i was like i'm gay how could you do that to me blah, 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 blah. and then COVID hit and my dad got cancer and i was like oh that is reality calling ding dong like we need to handle some shit. And I'm fully aware that this is not like the popular left idea of like staying in community with people who are trump supporters but like they're my fucking parents dude they have supported me. They are brilliant people who are loved and respected in their community. I really admire them as people outside of their political ideology. And I'm sure they feel the same way about me. But when I get very like deep and human about it, I'm like, I am a being on a planet that is orbiting in outer space. I, there are certain times where I'm like, I don't give a fuck about politics. Like I just, as a human being, want to stay close to my parents. I'm no longer going to allow Donald Trump and MAGA to ruin my real life relationship with my real life parents. I don't agree with their political ideologies, but at the end of the day, I have like a finite amount of time with my parents and I cannot justify taking any more space from them than I already have. So I offer this to anyone else. I cannot start crying, but I offer this to anyone else who's going through the same thing. I'm a queer person, you're a queer person. We all have these relationships with our parents to an extent, maybe you do, maybe you don't. I have a similar experience with my family where I have a limited amount of time with them and I would like to spend it uh, well. And at the same time, I also have very opinionated parents. I have very strong parents. I have very, uh, what's the word, like frustrating parents where they really feel like sometimes it's their obligation to make sure we, you know, we as their kids know where they stand, mostly my mother more than my father. And I think that's because my mother's just like extra passionate about the things she believes in. She also really wants to save her kids, which again, the road to hell is paved in good intentions. So even recently, my mom and I have a truce. We don't talk about politics because like I will just not answer your phone calls. Because at this point, I'm 35 years old. I've been a liberal for many, many years, over a decade now. It's pretty clear I'm not going to switch over anytime soon. And so it's one of those things where they're religious, they're anti-gay, I'm queer, I'm pro-gay. It is one of those things where this is the largest disconnect. Abortion as well is a disconnect, obviously. And it is interesting because they want the best for me and I want the best for them. But I think those look like two different things. And that's always going to be a big part of the problem. So how do we have these conversations? Like, again, we're talking about voting as if the other side doesn't also feel the same way about you. These people are so scared for you. They're so scared for America. They think we're destroying this country and we think they're destroying the country. And at the end of the day, we're both destroying the country. And that is the reality both of us have to accept. We are destroying this country for somebody and we are making it more comfortable for us. And that is what's so hard about these bubbles. It's so hard about being a person because people think morals are objective. They think we're living in a universe that sort of is like looking out for us. We think we live in a universe where there's a God who created us. Some people think there's a, you know, a simulation. Some people think we haven't landed on the moon. Everyone's having a different relationship with perception. But trust me when I say there is a group of MAGA supporters, most of them, 
who are frightened that we are going to destroy this country. And we will for them to some extent in the same way that they will for us to some extent. And I'd love for it not to be an us versus them, but unless we can learn to compromise with how we allow people to live in this country, then we're gonna move people in a direction that feels like we're eradicating some group or some belief system. And that's really, really hard. That's really hard for people to process. Now, every new generation should be smarter than the last. That's the hope. And the reality is like, look, I think in 100 years, most people are going to be bisexual and autistic, not because, you know, they're going to be brainwashed to be, but because we're going to actually be more honest about the ways that our kids have been functioning in the world, the way our parents struggled. We're going to be more honest about how genetics are playing a role. And we're going to be more welcoming to the, un like, the uniqueness of everybody and how we're all different. I really think most of the world will probably realize, like, I think you're all, like, neurodivergently weird. Like, this idea that neurotypicals are the majority, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. But at the same time, so much of it is impacted by what we do to our own bodies. If your father smokes, you are more than likely to have ADHD. My father used to smoke. His kids got ADHD. You know what I mean? If you look at the way that, you know, incest is pretty prevalent in cousin marriages around the world, including in America, like we have to be honest with ourselves, like this is impacting our offspring. And again, we're just humans. We're like these animals on a planet. So we don't even know what we're doing, but we're doing our best. I mean, we have little microplastics in our wombs and in our brain and in our DNA. So like we, you know, we, uh, we have to accept um, that we're just like little animals who are trying new things. We're not perfect. I'm not mad at my parents for doing the best they can. I'm not mad at the world for doing the best it can. But I want to remind you that if you think the world is somehow doing less than the best it can, you have to ask yourself if you're doing less than you can. Because the world is just you in a different timeline, in a different story, in a different anime, right? I do the best I can with what I can, and I ignore everybody else because everybody else is on their own journey and it ain't got nothing to do with me at the end of the day. It might impact me and our energies might cross, like we might cross each other on a path. But you know what I mean? Like, not my business, girl. Okay, now, he actually had an opinion on Chapel Roan's reaction. So let's see what he's going to say after him after he just said he wants to spend more time with his Mac appearance. Let's see what he thinks about Chapel Roan's recent video, the one we just watched. Someone DM'd me earlier asking me to speak on the Chapel Roan situation, and I was like, I don't want to do it. Then I just watched her most recent video, and bitch, I'm pacing. I'm pacing around my apartment because I'm a little annoyed, okay? Whether she likes it or not, this most recent video was a false equivalency. And let me preface, I love Chapel Roan's music. I fucking love her. Big fan. Stan. Love Chapel Roan. Does not negate the fact that what she's doing is harmful. The way she keeps saying think critically as if we're not, like I have critically thought about the fact that trans people will not have rights if Donald Trump is the president again. And what's even crazier is her saying cis people should be making decisions for trans people. That means you, you are a cis person making decisions for trans people. By not voting against Donald Trump, you are a cis person making a decision that harms trans people, Chapel Rowan. That we're talking about yourself, baby. Look in the mirror, face to face. Do we believe that? I don't think that's what that means. I think he's making a logical fallacy because you also don't want trans people dictating what cis people do, right? Like, I think that's kind of a weird, at the end of the day, we don't want anyone telling anyone what to do. So it feels like he missed the point there a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Like, he kind of missed the point. But okay, like, keep going, girl. Face, yeah, I told you so. And I find it really ironic that in her video, she's like, I question my algorithm. But I'm like, you are a victim of mainstream media if you believe that Kamala Harris and Donald Trump are the same level of debaucherous. They're not. So It depends on what one-to-one -one you're counting, and I think this is important. And I agree that they're not one-to-one -one on issues that matter to queer people, but they might be one-to-one -one on people who are worried about Palestine or other things. Now, Kamala is more Palestine- pro Palestine, she's looking for a two-state solution or at least a, at least, you know, some sort of solution. So that's good. I think that they're not one-to-one. -one. I agree with that. But again, it depends on the game you're playing. Like you, it's just, it's absurd. Like I'm not saying that everyone has to endorse the democratic president, right? But just don't address it. If what you're saying is not galvanizing anyone to do, because what this video is basically saying is vote small, don't vote for the president. 
Sure, some people can hear it that way. Some people in chat are saying that she's not endorsing Kamala, but she'll probably vote for her. I don't know. I don't know what she'll do, right? I don't know what Chapel will do, but again, it doesn't matter what Chapel will do. I'm going to do what I'm going to do, right? I'm going to do what I am going to do, but I think that's the problem is like we are so worried about what other people are doing, which is this, the problem the homophobes have. You are too worried about what gay people are doing. Shut the fuck up, right? We are too worried about what Chapel Roan is doing. Shut the fuck up. Like at the end of the day, I don't care what any of you are doing. I'm going to do what I need to do. And I think that says more. And I think that's what's mostly important is that we are doing what we are supposed to be doing. I trust Chapel to do what's good for her. I trust myself to do what's good for me. I don't trust other people to do what's good for me, even if they say they're an ally. And that's the difference. I don't respect Chapel Roan for not voting for Kamala Harris but I don't need to. That's the difference. I don't care what she does. I don't, I don't respect people who vote for Trump. I don't care if you do. I respect you in some aspects, but I don't respect you not, like, I don't respect that you voted for Trump, right? Like, I do not respect this decision. I don't care though. And you shouldn't care that I don't respect this decision. You shouldn't care that I think you're a shitty parent, which we'll get into later in the stream. You shouldn't care that I think you have bad ideas. At the end of the day, you care way too much what I think. And you care too much what Chapel Roan thinks. And that's what I'm trying to get people to understand. Who votes for the president? Republicans. So if you keep saying that all this is for advocacy for trans people, that means vote for the president who has ever mentioned anything that has to do with affirming LGBTQ people. So like this like anti position is still a position. It still has an effect by saying, don't do like you're implying I, I'm not voting for Trump, but I'm like, so you're not I mean, I agree that if she cares enough about trans rights, she should be backing Kamala Harris. But at the same time, I think I stand by what I said. I don't care what Chapel Roan does. Voting for the president is what I'm getting from this, right? That is still an action. That still has consequences. You are not completely absolved from the ramifications of your inaction because you thought you didn't take action. You took an action. You still allowed or I can't say you will still be allowing what you're saying you don't want to happen to happen by not voting in a two-party system I mean I think he's right with that you guys do understand right like uh, he is right in that regard that what is she is doing is she is she's probably not going to vote for Kamala or she probably will vote for Kamala but he is right like the fact that she's pro-trans should be enough for her to vote Kamala the fact that she's pro-abortion should be enough to vote Kamala. At the end of the day, like if these uh, these things are very important to you, you will vote Kamala Harris, even if she continues to genocide Palestine. And that's very hard for people to swallow because they want it all. They want the presidential candidate that will hold Israel accountable. They want the presidential can candidate that will be pro-gay rights and trans rights and give them abortion. But you're not going to have that. It is better to vote for a president, in my opinion, in my opinion, that gives you closer to what you need because we're on a trajectory of history than less of what you need. Like voting Trump is just way too far. But at the end of the day, and I think this is important, it doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter what one human being does on the planet. What matters is what you do. And right now what you're doing is going for somebody. Like he's talking directly to Chapel, which is I think what's annoying. Well, don't talk to her. Talk to your audience, but you can't do it. So you're attacking a neurodivergent sick lady who's who's dealing with her own shit right now. Like you're just punching down at the end of the day. But they don't see that because they think Chapel's famous. But let me tell you, this guy, he definitely want to be famous. I can tell. That is the world we live in. Ding, ding, ding. This is reality. Don't think of Chaperone as a celebrity also. Think of her as just another person. It is frustrating when your neighbor is voting against your civil rights or even advocating or saying that they might. It would be really nice if everyone who cared about LGBT people, LGBT people, LGBTQ people, oh my God, or women or femme people, if they voted for Kamala, that'd be very helpful. That would be very helpful. It would be really lovely if you could do that. If you don't do it, it doesn't matter. We're all going to die on the cesspool of a planet, but also it'd be very helpful and it would help your kids, but you don't have to do it, but it would help, but you don't have to help people. You're not obligated to help people, but it would help. Hello, everybody. I present to you my MAGA mom. <laughs> this is my mom, Renee. Hi. Um, we just finished filming the- Very adorable, very sweet lady, good energy. These are MAGA voters. MAGA voters aren't just Nazis. They're also sweet black mothers. They're also sweet Assyrian mothers, like my mother. Okay? They're not just like Nazis on motorcycles. 
Some of them are people of color who have felt like America was a good thing for them. And for whatever reason, they're choosing to vote MAGA. Okay. The very long episode of the podcast that will be coming out very soon. Um, but mom, I was literally looking because you were on Facebook on your phone and I was like, there's a really important question that someone asked in the comments that I want to ask you because we didn't get to it. Uh, Where do you get your news? Oh, actually, I get my news from a bunch of different places. So um, I get it sometimes from Fox News, sometimes from CNN, sometimes from NS MSNBC, sometimes from different podcasters, uh, BBC News. Uh I'm sorry. Chad is saying, hold on. Chad keeps saying, why care what an artist is supporting or not would really not change my vote. Trump is a celebrity. Trump is that celebrity that rose to the presidency. Arnold Schwarzenegger was an actor who rose to governorship. Like at the end of the day, every I feel like we're maybe sinking back into our bubbles here a little bit, guys. Reminder that celebrities become world leaders. So at the end of the day, we do look for people. We look for people's opinions. We look for our neighbor's opinions. If you're gonna, if you're gonna ask somebody in your friend group what they think about politics, why the f wouldn't you ask a celebrity? Think about what you're saying. Are you saying you never ask anyone but yourself input? It doesn't matter who you're asking. You're asking another person. Every single American adult in this country is eligible and should be eligible to vote. And they're all impacting the system. Why wouldn't you ask a celebrity who they're voting for? Why wouldn't you ask anybody what you're, what, who you're voting for? Why wouldn't you ask the homeless guy in the street who has the right to vote who you're voting for? Like, why wouldn't you ask people? And at the end of the day, if you're saying I live in such an insular bubble, I never ask anyone else who they're voting for, right? Then I don't know what you're saying either. I feel like there's a little bit of like, we want to like pretend that we're not thinking about what other people are doing, but like, don't, don't you have a partner, you ask? Don't you have, like, a family member, you ask? Don't you have a teacher, you've asked? Or a professor? Which president was actor, Discord says? Reagan. Also, Reagan was president, and he was an actor. Uh, let's say Sky News in Australia. Um, yeah, so just, uh, yeah, just a bunch of different places. And then some of it's... Rupert Murdoch, you're welcome. Oh! Well, <laughs> yeah, but it's more than Rupert Mur Murdoch. Yeah, it's like, get it just from a bunch of, yeah, a bunch of different places. Because I think it's really important to hear both sides, um, the, of the story. And that's the dilemma, is like, it's not both sides, and that's why Chapel Roan sounds like a centrist. Because just so you know, there's like six sides to the political spectrum. Right? Like, if you're a Republican and a Democrat, those are the two sides. Then there's progressives and then there's alt-righters and then they go on and on and on. So even when you say like both sides, who are the both sides? Because progressives are not liberals, right? Like Republicans aren't alt-right. Aren't all right. Like these are all different categories of political persuasion, right? So again, I think there's also that that's when I hear like, oh, both sides have problems. Like which both sides are we talking about? And I really think, it, you know what? A, a lot of times I think that when we do newspapers or you hear, I mean, when you hear personality, you're hearing a person talk, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But when you read stuff like the Daily Wire, get from the Daily Wire, from the blaze, right? You're, so you have to go behind the mask and realize that you're hearing from one person and that one person's point of view may control a lot of people. So, Rupert Murdoch. Right. Well, but it, yeah, okay. I'm not going to argue. But, um, <laughs> but uh, so we, like I like, um, what's the guy's name? Um, oh, I can't even think of Daily Wire guy. Ben Shapiro. I like Oh, ben okay. <laughs> We're moving on. <laughs> Uh, okay, second, second question. Okay, if not Donald Trump, who? Ooh, RFK. We're wrapped. You Good night. Are? Goodbye. Hello, everybody. I present. Okay, next. I want to talk Oops. about. Nope, next. I went to a Tucker for birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. MAGA, the fact that she spent her birthday with Tucker Carlson. <laughs> Tucker and it was like, this okay, is wait, a wait, gift. Wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Oh so, my God. I know. I bought that gift for me. I went to see I Tucker. See. Wait, no. I went to see Tucker Carlson, Vivek Wamaswamy. Yay, Vivek. I think Ugh. he's great. Um, and I then, wasn't oh, lying wait, when I said wait, she was MAGA. Wait, 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 wait. And then RFK <laughs> came out and RFK was... Shut up. R <laughs> RFK was the guest speaker. Now, RFK... Um, Nightmare blunt rotation, no, by the stop. way. Nightmare blunt stop, rotation. Stop, 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 stop. So this is like what's so interesting because, again... Look how lovely she is. Do you want anything bad to happen, happen to this woman? I don't want anything bad to happen to this woman. I will vote in any way to make it so this woman doesn't have to suffer in life. But of course, in my opinion, the way I see it, 
is that if you vote Trump, she cannot help but impact my life because of that. But if I vote Kamala, I do not believe that this woman will be harmed. And that is my belief. Now, Christians and Catholics in my family that I hear from, they don't believe this. They think if you vote Kamala, she's going to make them suffer. She's going like, to destroy the government. She's going to destroy America, destroy freedom. And what does that destroying look like? It looks like encouraging our kids to feel safe, to say that they're neurodivergent or queer. It looks like people getting medical care needs met, like abortion or birth control. It looks like the government minding its own business. The, the issue that I'm finding here is that it's hard to look at someone in the eye and say the way you're thinking, it's going to hurt me in a way that I feel like is more tangible than the way that you perceive it if they've already decided they're not changing their mind. And look, don't get me wrong. I am not going to change my mind to ever be anti-gay. I don't think you could ever tell me that there's a good reason to be anti-gay, right? Like that's not going to happen. But it, but there's also not going to be a good reason for me to be anti-religious. Like I'm not anti-religious. I'm not one of those like atheists who go around thinking, you know, we need to destroy religion. I don't think we should destroy religion. I think we should have an appropriate place for it to exist within society that doesn't infiltrate the government. But I think that I believe in compromise. I believe in that idea of meeting people where they are. And that's the dilemma we're all going to have is that certain people's solutions will work for more people than others. And the question is, which one is going to do which? I think Kamala Harris will work better for more people than Trump's plans will. I think Trump's plans will work better for a select group of people. And that's an issue that I'm going to have, right? America is like this beautiful experiment, but so is all of existence. And for the people that keep saying like America is the worst country that's ever existed, I think you have the wrong way of viewing the world, but you can do you. If you sit there and think like all MAGA people are awful, I guess that's one way to exist. If you want to sit here and think like all trans people are gross and groomers, like sure, if that's how you want to live. I just think really thinking about people in this way is not going to help you or other humans. I just don't think so. Humans are so much better than we give them credit for and so much worse than we give them credit for. And it's about finding the nuance in that reality. Like with peace and love, I'm only trying to harm reduce. I'm never trying to ask for a perfect world. And I start with myself because I'm too flawed of a person to ask the world to be different than what it is. I am too flawed of a person to look at the world and say, be better when I know that I'm still working on myself. Even if what I'm working on is just making sure that I run enough steps a day. I don't run, girl. Let's be real. Walk enough steps a day or making sure that I take care of my fibro or making sure that I take care of my job or making sure that I sleep enough. Like these might feel like things that have nothing to do with anything, but they are the stepping stone for everything else. If every one of those people that you feel so afraid of spent more time working on those things themselves, they wouldn't have time to hate you. They wouldn't have time to want to hate you. Because who has more time in their life than a person that hates somebody else? You must have a lot of free time because I don't have that kind of free time. I'm busy. When I say I have no enemies, I mean this. I only have other forces of nature that I'm up against. I want everyone to be better. I want everyone to win. But I know that asking that of people is too much. It is too much of me to ask someone to be better. So all I ask is that you recognize that other people are trying just as much as you are. And maybe that's too much. Sometimes it's really hard for me to look at my MAGA parents and say to them, I promise you people are trying. Like, I promise you I am trying my best to like do what I think is good for this country. And they sit there really worried. Guys, they are terrified that their kids are going to have a worse life because I'm voting Kamala Harris. That's so valid because I think them voting Trump is going to impact my nieces and nephews for the worse. Our feelings are the same. Our worries are the same. We are terrified for the future generations. So be less terrified and do what you think is right. And it is what it is. It's going to be what it is. And we'll find out in a hundred years when we look back and we think, oop, my bad. Because in the moment, we all think we're doing the right thing, but only time tells. Like hindsight is twenty twenty, and none of us have the hindsight yet. Even though I say this, I still think I'm the, I have the right answer, but I know I could be wrong, and that's the difference. I do think I have the right answer, but I don't know if I'm wrong or right yet, and that's the difference between, I think, some people and other people. I think other people think they have the right answer. Even if in 100 years it's proven to be wrong, they're going to double down. And those are the people that are just as human as anyone else. Okay? 
So I like this idea that Chapel Roan is standing up for her values. I like this idea that people are impassioned by her views, maybe even to go out, go out and vote now. Maybe Chapel Roan doing what she did inspired people to go out and vote for Kamala Harris, ironically enough. Because maybe they were so mad that she wasn't going to say anything positive about Kamala that they're like, you know what? Okay, I'm going to register to vote. Because at the end of the day, Taylor Swift is the reason a lot of people signed up to vote. Celebrities are the reason people are voting. A lot of people need the people they like to convince them to go out and vote, whether it's your neighbor or a celebrity. And I think that that's just how humans work. In my bubble, I grew up with these conservatives who always said, why do celebrities talk about voting? Why don't you just dribble a ball and be quiet, right? Like shut up and dribble or shut up and sing or whatever that book was called. It's like, why don't you just shut up and do your job? What a disconnect. What a cognitive disconnect. What a de dehumanizing disconnect. As if celebrities aren't also American voters. As if celebrities aren't also someone's mother or father or child. As if celebrities aren't also people who deserve to be represented by the government. Celebrities aren't just people that you get to make fun of and say, like, who cares about their opinion? They are your neighbors. They are people. They are your community members. They are your fellow Americans. They are your taxpayers. And they deserve to have a voice as much as any of us. Right? And I think it's really fucked up to be so dehumanizing to celebrities because you don't think they have a right to say anything. Now, I think we would all agree it sucks to put pressure on people to say stuff because I don't like that feeling. I didn't like that feeling when Palestine and Israel first happened. I didn't like the feeling of feeling the pressure to say something about a conflict I wasn't sure what I was going to say, right? So I want to wait and think about it. And now I'm much more vocal about stuff. How many months later would I feel more like sure about my opinions, right? So you can make a decision how you want to feel about other people, but that is a decision you are making. So if you want to decide to hate people, that's a decision you're making. If you want to decide to think badly of people, that's the decision you're making, right? And we're going to, you know, after this, we're going to talk about parenting and how I'm a big person. Well, not a big, no, sorry. Well, I'm a big fan, not a big person. I'm a big fan of preventing things from happening for future generations and meeting people where they are when they've already made the bad decision, right? Like, I don't want to punish people for making bad decisions, but I also don't want to repeat the bad decision. So I want to say, okay, in the future, don't do what this person did. But that's really hard because people are going to say, are you saying I'm a bad person? I'm saying you made a bad decision that we shouldn't repeat. And I think a TikTok said it best. Would you want your children to have your childhood? And it's like, I would want my child to have parts of my childhood, but not many other parts. And that's a big deal. That's what we're saying. We're saying the parts that you wouldn't wish upon a child, how do we stop that from happening? When conservatives are worried about trans children, they're desperately worried that they would have been the child that people thought were trans and they experimented on them. Keep in mind, lots of MAGA people are imagining that they would be the children and they're not trans. So they're like, oh my God, oh my God, I couldn't imagine being a child and somebody cutting off my breasts, even though that's not happening. They're doing this thing where they... They like get this fear of like, I couldn't imagine if that was me. It wouldn't be you because you're not trans. And also that's not happening, but they can't believe it because they get bad news sources. They get, they don't listen to their own children. Remind you that my parents have three queer children and they do not respect either of our opinions on queerness. My parents don't ask about our queerness. And when they do, it's just to give us a Bible verse. They're not actually open-minded when it comes to thinking about their queer kids' experiences. They're not interested in knowing the nuance of our lives or our relationships. They, like, at the end of the day, when you grow up with somebody like this, it, you hate to see the same attitude from a progressive. That's the painful part. You hate to see a MAGA attitude in a progressive. So please don't be like my MAGA parents, even when you call yourself a progressive. And that's really what this is about. If you're better than the MAGAs, then act better than them. Okay? Because that attitude seems to be universal in people, regardless of political affiliation. All right, let's go on to the parent stuff because I think you'll find it interesting, especially in regards to this, because not everybody actually loves being a parent. But let me tell you, as somebody who had parents who loved being my parents, the one thing I know about my mom and dad, they love being parents. They really love their kids. That is the one thing I will say about my parents. They really, 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 really love being parents. And they really, really tried. It wasn't perfect. 
and I never was going to be, but to the best of their ability, they really tried and they really, really loved their kids. And because of that, I can hold a lot of compassion for them because like, what more could I ask from a parent than to love their kids so much? You're trying your hardest to do right by them. It just wasn't exactly perfect because what happened is a belief system got in the way. You had exactly the kind of kid that challenged your whole belief system. That's hard. That is really hard. Da, 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 da.